It's time to do an updated review of my Foray Lepage Daily Battle Tote in size 32 and the color that I have is in Paris blue. I've already done a couple of videos about this bag, my unboxing of it, my reveal, and then I also did a first impressions after I think it was about like a month. I'll link those two videos in the description section down below. But I've already owned this bag for two years. So I bought it in September 2019 and well, it is September 2021. Time has flown by, so I have been actually using this bag and I can give you an update of it because, you know, there are some wear and tears and give you my opinion about whether I still like this bag or not and if I think it's worth buying. Before I get started, if you are new to my channel, welcome, my name is Kat. I love to do luxury related videos. Handbag reviews are one of my favorites. I also love skincare and makeup. So if you enjoy that kind of video, I hope you will consider subscribing. And for everyone else, welcome back and let's get started to this review. Let me start off with usage so that it will give you a bit of context to the wear and tear which I'll talk about next. Now when I first got this bag, this was more of a traveling bag because I am not a tote bag kind of girl. If you follow me for a while, you know that I don't really use such big bags. So when I purchased this in December, uh, September 2019, I actually used it for a trip to America. So I brought it there for a holiday and it was my I tote bag for everything. I used it the entire trip when I went for hiking, shopping, going out with my parents for dinner. It was just the bag that I carried everything because it was a little cold. So I put my scarf inside, my extra water bottle and things that I need to put as I buy stuff. So it was a great size bag. What I found from that trip to be extremely helpful was the adjustable strap. And there are, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's 15 loops here that you can change, make the strap shorter, longer. And for me, I actually extended the strap because I was wearing sweaters and jackets because it was cold and I wasn't used to the weather there. And when you wear something thicker, it just made it so much more difficult to, you know, put the bag underneath, like put your hand through. Fast forward to today, since that trip, well, you know, we had the pandemic and all <laughs> and things, you know, I don't really need such a big bag. However, I have still been using this bag now for work. I haven't been carrying my backpack for work. There are a couple of occasions where I have to put like my gym clothes in my bag and bring my laptop and everything and I'll just use my backpack. However, the days that I go to the office and I wasn't using my um, gym bag and all, like put my shoes and all, what I did was I put like my laptop, I had books, my water bottle, my scarf, food and all. So my bag does get quite packed and heavy. And I actually have a 13 inch laptop with the wires and everything, this bag can quite can get quite heavy. And once again, I did find that the strap became very handy when my bag was very full. So it's sort of like this big, you know, full of stuff so wide that when the strap is too short and the kind of like the toad is too big, the top strap actually falls off and it becomes quite uncomfortable. Like it feels really tight. Then I realized that if I lengthen the strap when my bag or my toad is really fold up, um, it just makes the bag feel more comfortable. So having a longer strap when the tote is filled to the brim uh, is very, very handy. How often do I use this tote since my last holiday, which was in September 2019? I also used it in October. I use it every week at least once. Don't use it like a daily tote, uh, but I do reach for it almost every week. Uh, maybe last year, 2020, a little less, um, maybe once every two weeks. But in this particular year, um, 2021, I have been using it every single week at least once. So that's the context of usage and let's talk about wear and tear today. First wear and tear that obviously is the most obvious is the corner. The corners have been rubbed and scraped. Um, I'm not the most gentle with this bag. I do bump it around. I use it like a, like it's going through battle. And yeah, it's been scraped. I'm not worried about the corners because if I need to, I can always get it to a bag repair store and I can just repaint it because it's not tearing. It's just the paint has rubbed off, the leather has rubbed off. That can be easily fixed. Considering the amount of stuff that I have put inside this bag, um, this corner wear is to me minimal. The bottom of the bag, which, you know, it doesn't have feet and it is stuffed with my things. I don't use a bag organizer. I have put this on, you know, floor flooring, um, put it on the floor of my office, you know, tables and stuff. You know, 
the canvas has not rubbed off. You would think that putting this, you know, leather, or sorry, canvas directly on surfaces and then when you pick it up, you know, kind of like scraping a little bit, things like that, you don't know until you check the bottom. So right now that I'm checking the bottom, I can honestly tell you it looks brand new. The paint, the canvas, there is nothing that indicates that this guy has been put on the floor multiple, multiple times. And similarly, the canvas that's surrounding the entire bag, it just looks brand spanking new. So the other part that I do see more wear is obviously the straps. It has softened quite a bit. It's very, very soft, especially at the top here. It just feels like it's worn. It's not as, say, stiff as maybe the portion that is nearer to the bag. At the top here, it's soft. It definitely feels used. Sort of like a brand new belt that you have, you know, put around your waist for a couple of years. And after a while, it's just a little softer. And that's how I want to describe that this is the feeling that I have with the straps. So this portion of it just feels like it's been, you know, turned around a little bit more, whereas spaces where it's, you know, not touched so much, it still has that stiffness to it. As for the interior, I have nothing much to say about it. It just looks really clean because I don't just put my things inside. I do put them in baggies. Occasionally, I do just put my laptop inside. But other than that, it's just got a little bit of dust and dirt, which I can just rub out easily. I don't use this pocket very often unless I don't have a bag with me. So if, say, I was just carrying this tote by itself, then I would use this to put like my train card or maybe my credit card as well or my phone if I need to reach for it very quickly. But most times when I carry this tote, I always have my other handbag with me. This is sort of like my carry bag, which I put other things inside and I'll have a spare handbag, which is actually my handbag for things. So I don't find that I have used this very much, but it is very, very handy to have with the bag. Together with this bag, I actually purchased this pochette because for a Lepage, uh, their history is actually armory. And I thought it was, you know, a piece that symbolizes the history and it's kind of unique because, you know, you don't really see pochettes that is a shape of a gun, a pistol, I guess. I'm not sure what is this. And I love the fact that it has such a long strap. But truth be told, I have not used it. It still has its brand new smell. I think this is like my maybe my second time even opening the buttons. I haven't used it at all. I actually put it up for sale on my Instagram, uh, Cat's Closet. If you are interested, if you're looking for this piece, let me know. I definitely would love to let this go to somebody that appreciates things like this. It's more unique. I, I just don't use it because, like I said again, I find that this pouch inside here is good enough and even if I'm not using that, I already have a separate handbag. So I just don't find myself reaching for this. I do wonder if I purchase the square version, like the shape, that it would have been more functional. But I thought this was a good like piece to include because the heritage of Foray Lepage is, you know, armory and all. And it's actually a pretty good size. It's not like a dinky small pouch. It is actually a good size pouch for, I don't know, for what? Like for cards, for even for your phone, it probably could fit. It, it even comes with its own little baggie. Two parts of this bag that I do want to comment on. Number one, and I also mentioned this in my review video, is that this detachable strap, over time, you can see that it sort of slides outwards. This one didn't go out because I have hooked it inside. But if you have the strap at a very short setting, so let me just do that now. I've only done one side to be a short setting. But as you can see, um, the strap that has left behind is very, very long. And one thing that I've noticed is that the, the end of this loose strap does curl outwards. That happened fairly quickly after I got this bag. So when you first purchase this bag, the strap is just straight, flat like a piece of paper. But after you start using it, this actually starts to curl forward. And what I do is, when I remember anyway, is when I store this bag, I kind of like do this inwards. I fold it underneath so that the leather curls back in its shape. I think I can probably do it, you know, when I'm just, you know, using the bag and just turning it in. But I just have to remember to do it. Otherwise, you get this two straps because they're both on each side. They're like curling out like that, which is not the most attractive. You know, there is pros and cons to having an adjustable strap. 
The Pro is it's adjustable. You can adjust it to the size of your jacket. You know how whether you're taller, you're you know more petite, or you have more things in the bag. You can adjust the strap to make it very personalized for you. But the con is this little bit of tongue that sticks out does like stick forward. It's been two years, it still does it. It's kind of lessened a little bit because the leather has softened, but I wish it didn't do it at all. So one of the things that I do is when I store it, I kind of tilt it underneath and keep it like that. Then by the time I use it and I come out, it's sort of straight-ish. The second thing that I want to mention, and I've also mentioned it in my past video, is I do regret adding charms to this bag. I can definitely go to the store and ask them to remove it. However, since I've already bought it and it's not cheap because you need to buy this holder piece as well as the charm, and this whole thing is very expensive. I cannot remember the price off the top of my head, but I knew that it was uh, an additional cost to my bag. And the reason I do not like it is two reasons. Firstly, it weighs down the bag a little bit. As you can see, it kind of pushes, like it gives a bit of weight here. See when it's heavy, it's the part that has the charm that drags the canvas down. And uh, you know, the canvas is in such good quality that even though there is that drag, it doesn't leave any lines, so it's not an issue, it's just it doesn't look nice and my bag always looks like it's falling this side. The other thing is, because I was greedy and I did two charms, it's always um, making noise. I'm not opposed to noise on my bag, like some of my bags with chains, they're very noisy, but I just feel like already I do not like it, it just, it just irritates me a little bit more. So. If you are thinking about personalization, I would say just go with one charm and just be aware that that part that you have the charm with, it's going to be heavier than the, the other parts that doesn't have charms. Let's round up this review and I'm going to tell you if I do think this bag is a good purchase and if I do recommend it over other bags. I absolutely love this bag. This Foray La Pache tote has been a game changer for me. I'm not a tote bag girl. I've always wanted to buy the LV monogram, but I never did, you know, the LV Neverfull, which is super, super popular. I ended up going for the Foray La Pache instead of another popular one, which is the Goyard tote. So it took me a while and I decided on this bag. It was one of the bags that was so understated. Not many people knew about this brand and it was actually really hard to get when I got it. I got it through email directly from the France uh, boutique because they had to send it to me and I had to pay shipping and all but now they have boutiques, a couple of boutiques if I'm not mistaken, in Singapore which is amazing because they finally are branching out from Paris or, or France. It is really really good. The canvas quality is extremely tough but yet supple at the same time. I love the pattern, it's not too loud. This size 32 was just the perfect size for me. But I have to say, and I want to add this on, is that if you are thinking about this bag, there is another size up. So 32 and I believe the size up is 36. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe 35 or 36. So that bigger size is larger. So maybe like LV's GM size. I do see benefit in having a slightly bigger bag because when I do fill this bag up and I don't put like a lot of things but you know enough like my laptop, my shoes, my clothes and just stuff it inside, there is that lacking of space. So it is a smaller, I'll say small to mid-sized tote. It's not super large that uh, you can put like lots of things inside like a mummy bag. I think if you want going for a mummy bag this is not big enough for you unless your kids are lot, like older and you know you don't need to bring a lot of things for them. But if you need to bring more things for your kids, sort of like the LV Neverfull GM is better or at least the size up from this is better. This is more me appropriate, you know, non tote bag girl who carries, wants to, wants to, needs a tote once in a while and would find this to be more handy, not too large. Would I change the specifications? Yes, I would. I won't get the charm. And I think I may consider getting the one with the zip. One of the things that makes this bag so good and easy is that it doesn't have a zip. So I can put things taller and just lengthen the strap and just use it all the way filled up even above the top of the bag, which is great. But in terms of safety, like if when travel becomes a thing again, 
Uh, I think having a zip is safer, it's better, and it just, I don't know, it's just maybe more functional because you could put your things inside and not worry about it. At the same time, because it has a zip, it kind of looks more put together, like a proper tote bag. I feel like with the zip, it lifts up the back a bit more because it's not with the zip. Look at that, it's just like opening like a mouth. It's, it's not a bad design, I'm just saying that if I had to pick again, maybe I would try the one with the zip and um, that could be, could be a game changer uh, for people who love totes and love to bring totes for traveling. So that's my two year update of this beautiful Foray Lapage Daily Battle Tote 32 in the color Paris Blue. I hope you enjoyed this review video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. And yeah, everybody take care, stay safe and I will see you in my next video. Bye!